This is In The Loop. I'm Cody Legro in for Christian Bryant. Every election season, you might get bombarded with reminders and alerts to check your voter status and register to vote. And for most of us, we can take that for granted that when we're allowed to register, we must be eligible and free to vote. But for over a million voters in Florida, their voter status is not so clear. And the consequences for any mistakes can lead to scenes like this one. Apparently, I, I, I guess you have a warrant? For what? I'm not it's sure. for voter stuff, man. For voters. It's, it's... Our sister station, WFTS in Tampa, obtained this body camera footage showing officers arresting Floridians for alleged voter fraud back in August. These arrests are a result of a crackdown from Governor DeSantis' new Office of Election Crimes and Security Task Force. Hours after the 20 arrests, the governor held a press conference to tout the team's success. This is something where we sprung into action very quickly. Uh, we got the money July 1st, already have hired people, already going to work, and I think it shows that this is something that we take very seriously. But the footage released in October paints a chaotic picture on the scene, with officers also seeming confused about the charges. I might vote for that voter, but I ain't fought, commit no fraud. Well, so th that's the thing. I, I don't know exactly what happened with it, but you, you do have a warrant. That's what it's for. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't know, ma'am. I honestly couldn't tell you, okay? The confusion is over the historic Amendment 4, a voting reform passed in 2018 in Florida by a popular vote referendum with 65% of the vote. The amendment restored voting rights to about 1.4 million residents, or about 10% of the state's population, who could not vote from prior felony convictions. It excluded those convicted of murder or felony sexual assault, and felons still serving parole or probation. For context, there are only two states where people with felony convictions permanently lose their right to vote. That's Kentucky and Virginia. Florida would have been joining the 14 other states shown here where people with felony convictions can vote after finishing their sentences. Instead, it is one of the seven states that have certain conditions for restoring voting rights. That's because just six months after the law went into effect, Florida's state Senate reversed the move Floridians had voted for. The Senate passed a bill on party lines to gut Amendment 4, the bill was challenged in court but still stands today, and the changes dramatically reduce who can vote and even options to find out if someone is eligible. One of the most significant changes was that those with a felony conviction must have also paid the full amount of penalties, but that's more complicated than it seems. There's no centralized system tracking payments, so it can be nearly impossible for residents to find out where they stand. To be clear, that includes what's known as user fees, like how in Florida, you must pay a fee for using public defenders or for even applying for a defender. One analysis found that about three out of every four people facing felony charges in the state cannot afford their own lawyer. So having outstanding payments is very common. As a requirement to vote, this excludes most of the people Amendment 4 was originally designed to help. And that's just one part of the labyrinth these residents have to face to figure out if they're eligible to vote. To learn more about the back and forth of these voter restrictions and what kind of impact it's having on the ground, we reached out to our sister station, Florida 24 Network. Reporter Sofia Hernandez is there now and has the latest. In the state of Florida, when a returning citizen is released, they are presented this probation form that they must sign. However, after the arrests of 20 individuals on the basis of voter fraud, one key part changed. Under restoration of voting rights, this section was added, saying, by signing this letter, you agree that you are solely responsible for determining if you are legally able to register to vote and that you must solely determine if you are lawfully qualified to vote. They have language in there that uh, singles out the individual, and in some way it's taking the responsibility off the government. Neil Voles, the deputy director of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, says instead of putting the blame on the citizen, the government should help assure someone's ability to vote. We don't want to be chasing down documents outside of the Secretary of State's office. We don't want to be worried about what one person's interpretation is. If I can register and within, say, 30 days, I can have assurances that I am or are not eligible, all of these challenges that we're discussing go away. 
Florida Secretary of State told us in September individuals are ultimately responsible for figuring out if they can legally vote. In this new form, there is no guidance on how a person with felony convictions should verify their eligibility to vote before they do so. Instead, it says to rely upon your own independent knowledge and if applicable, consult with your attorney. We believe that's in order to prepare our clients for eventual litigation. Alex Saiz with the Florida Justice Center says he believes this paper is creating evidence against those who least know the law to be able to charge them in the future. This form is designed so that when you go to that hearing and say, I didn't know, they can raise up a piece of paper with your signature to say you knew, even though the person is not necessarily going to be advised by an attorney before they sign this and does not have the right to say, I refuse to sign that document. They have to because they're on probation. Saeed says the problem is that those on probation will now have to be absolutely certain they can vote. If they are not, they face another felony for signing this document unlawfully. If my client has three DUIs and goes to the DMV, the DMV will tell them they are not allowed to drive. If you have a felony conviction and you apply to register to vote, the government's not running that background check and in many cases will presume you're eligible and send you a voter registration card. I would naturally assume that means that the government has proved me to vote, but that's not necessarily the case. As it stands now, those with felony convictions and are still on probation in Florida are not eligible to vote. But some people on probation without felony convictions should be able to. Saiz says he fears the lack of clarity will stop those who had their rights restored from voting. A lot of those clients are calling us up and saying, if there's a risk I could go back to jail, I'd rather not vote. And that's, a ch that's having a chilling effect on voter turnout. We can't just wait around and hope that the government will fix this system at some point, because while we're doing that, we're silencing thousands of voices in this state. Saiz encourages those who are unsure to reach out to an attorney or organizations like Florida Justice Center to have them prove your eligibility. I reached out to the Florida Department of Corrections about this change. They told me that everyone sentenced to probation is made aware about information on restoring their voting rights. And they told me that this form was updated so that those under supervision understand their voting rights. Cody, back to you. Thanks so much for that, Sophia, and for breaking down what voters in Florida should be aware of when they head to the ballots this year. If you just wanna check your voter status or have further questions about registration, be sure to head to vote.org for more information on your local area.